So without wasting any more time, I want us to start with today's paper. We are looking at the second paper. Question number one is a multiple choice question. The question says there are various options provided as possible answers to the following questions. We need to choose and write only the letter A to D next to the question numbered in the answer book. Now grade 12s, most of you guys, or some of you guys, actually write the actual answer and not the alphabet. Unfortunately, even though it is correct, the examiner cannot answer or mark it correctly. They want to see if you can actually read and follow instructions, so make sure that you do only choose from A to D. Also, try to keep the alphabet as capital letters. So for this one, I'm just going to circle, but in your answer book, you'd have to write the correct alphabet. Number 1.1 says, which one, only one, of the following is the general formula for alkanes? Now, we know alkanes belongs to a homologous series. It only has single chains. Therefore, number 1.1 will then be C. It will have Cn, H to N plus 2. Number 1.2 says the empirical formula of hexanoic acid is. Now, when we do empirical formulas, molecular formulas, that's all grade 11 content. So if you are having a bit of an issue with this topic, I would say take your grade 11 notes, sit down, and then revise empirical formula, molecular formula, and then you should get this one right. But the empirical formula of hexanoic acid, which is a carboxylic acid, will then be number D. Number 1.3, which one? So most of the times, or sometimes guys, if they give you a structure like this, you might kind of think there is more than one possible answer. If you do feel like that, always choose the most correct one. Most of the time, they never really give you an option of one or A and D or D and C. It's usually only one. So only choose one alphabet. So which one of the following is the correct structural formula for methyl methanoate? Methyl was actually methanol. Ethanoate is an, was ethanoic acid. Now I can see by the name ending of O8 that this is now an ester. Methanol and eth an ethanoic acid came together through a reaction and then made methanoic acid. Now this means, remember, if you have an ester and you kind of divide it in half, make sure that each side has got an oxygen, you are then able to find your alcohol and then your carboxylic acid. The one with the double bond oxygen will be your carboxylic acid. The one with only the O will then be your alcohol. Meth means one. So I'm looking for one side with only one and the other side with two. 1.3 will then be number C. If I was to draw a line between this, I only have one. This means this was my alcohol, which would be my methanol. Ethanoic acid would have been two Cs. And remember that water is then an inorganic compound that also forms. So 1.3 would have been number C. Number 1.4, we have zinc granules. Now it's very important in the rates of reactions, whether something is granules, powder, so forth. It reacts as the following with excess hydrochloric acid solution. They've given us the reaction here. And I can see that the reaction doesn't really need to be balanced, but let's see what it says. Which one of the following combinations of volume and concentration of HCl will result in the highest initial reaction rate for the same mass of zinc granules used? Assume the zinc granules are completely covered by the acid in all cases. Now, when it comes to topics like this with rates of reaction, therefore you need to know how does volume play a part how does concentrated or dilute substances play a role? And then you are able to look what is the uh, co coordination between the two. Another thing that you need to look at is remember that if something is in a powder form and something is in a, in a liquid form and something is granules, the rate of the reaction will then be the same. Remember, the whole idea is to speed up the reaction rate and then to have correct molecular orientation. So that's what we're always looking for here. So in this case, the correct volume and concentration combination for the zinc and hydrochloric acid for 1.4 will then be number B. This means if I have a volume of 100 cubic centimeters and therefore a concentration of 1, 1, 1,0 mole per cubic decimeter, that will then be my concentrator. This means I will have the highest, they wanted the highest initial reaction rate for the same mass. 
Number 1.5 says, the role of a catalyst, now we know that a catalyst speeds up the reaction rate with action, without action taking part, in a chemical reaction is to do what? Is it for the yield? Is it for activation energy? Is it the heat of the reaction? Or is it the rate of the reaction? A catalyst will speed up the reaction rate without actually taking part by lowering the activation energy. So number 1.5 will then be D. Number 1.6, it says we need to consider the equilibrium. The minute you see equilibrium, I want you to think Le Chatelier's principle. Consider the equilibrium represented by the balanced equation below. I've got my reaction here. I can see that it's a reversible reaction. And I can see that my heat enthalpy is actually given as less than zero. Which one of the following changes of the equilibrium will favor the forward reaction? Now remember, according to Le Chatelier, if the system is shifted in such a way or it has a stress, it will shift in such a manner as to relieve the stress. Therefore, if you're having a bit of issues, sit down and you must read when, is, when do we favor the forward reaction, when do we favor the reverse reaction. When is the reaction exothermic and when is the reaction endothermic. So those are the terms that we need to look for. But in this case, I just said which one of the changes to the equilibrium will then favor the forward reaction. So for 1.6, 1, the one that will favor the forward reaction is then number B a decrease in temperature and then an increase in pH will favor the forward reaction. Number 1.7, the conjugate base. Now remember we've got conjugate acids, we've also got conjugate bases. If you're having an issue, rather draw the whole thing out. The conjugate base of HPO4 to the exponent 2 minus is, in this case I can see that I'm going to lose the H, therefore it will then be number B. But on another note, just by mere looking at it, I can see that I've got OH there. I don't have a P, I do have a P here, meaning that I would have then added an H on this number B to get this one. So therefore for 1.7, it'll therefore then be number B. Number 1.8, which one of the following reactions will proceed spontaneously under standard conditions? Now remember, when we come to spontaneous and non-spontaneous equations, some of the concepts actually start in grade 11. Most of your foundation starts in grade 11. If you are having an issue about it, sit down with your grade 11 notes and then go through when will the reaction be spontaneous and when shall it then not be spontaneous. But for number 1.8, I've been given a few. You can use your table to look at it. But in this case, for number 1.8, the correct answer here was C. Number 1.9, it says the simplified diagram below represents an electrochemical cell used for the purification of copper. Now I can really see the minute you say an electrochemical cell, you must think anode, cathode, oxidation, and reduction, and so forth. I'm see I'm given number P and number Q and number Q, and then I'm given a cell. I'm given the electrolyte, which is the solution. Now we are told which one, only one of the following graphs below represents the change in a mass of electrode P and Q during the uh, purification process. Now remember, when we are doing an electrochemical cell, the one will get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then the one will get smaller and smaller and smaller. Remember, oxidation is a loss of electrons, and the other one is the gain of electrons. Remember, an ox and red cat reduction is the gain of electrons. So let's see which one will then be a change in mass for number Q and P for this cell. Therefore, for this one, it will therefore then be number A. The mass for A will decrease, whereas the mass for P will then increase during the purification process. Let's look at the last one, number 10. Eutrophication, this is also another term that comes up a lot in biology. So if you're doing biology, thumbs up. Eutrophication in water is caused by, is it algae bloom, bacterial nitrogen fixation, an increase in plant nutrients, and a depletion of oxygen concentration? Now remember, when you talk eutrophication, they can ask it in a multiple choice, but most of the time they're like asking it as a paragraph form 
where they actually ask you to explain how eutrophication actually occurs. But in this case, for number 1.10, it would be an increase in plant nutrients. And that is then how you have answered your multiple choice questions. Always make sure to only write the alphabet that you actually are asked, and then also make sure you only write one alphabet, not more than two. The examiner cannot choose the correct answer for you. Always keep it in capital letters, write NEAT. This was actually only for two marks, but some question papers can go up to three marks, so please, let's try to get uh, multiple choice four marks. <laughs>